Hey everybody, it's J oh yeah, uh, yeah I did. I got a haircut. I feel like I went from one extreme to the other because before I got the haircut, I could actually pull my hair into the tiniest, ugliest little ponytail ever, and now, well, I won't need it cut again for a little while. So I was just looking over some of my old comments, and on a video I posted a year ago about the Soul Scanner, the 3D printing DM, Danny contacted me and said, well, hold on, Danny didn't get a chance to record that, so I'm gonna have to uh, do my best Danny impression here. Joe, I get asked almost every video to scan minis. If you get a chance, please try scanning a mini print and let us know how it goes. I have a feeling I know where this will go, but I'd love to just see how the scanner does and your thoughts. Great video, thanks for sharing. Oh yeah, totally nailed it. Well, it's been a year and I'm starting to realize that I am a terrible friend. In fact, it's not because I didn't want to do it. In fact, I have been spending this year trying to get a good scan. I borrowed a mini from a friend of mine and I kind of like this mini because he, he got it to me with just base paint on it. So it's, it's pretty much entirely ready to scan. There's very little painted detail on here. And when I scanned it, the scan turned out not great. Of course, it looks okay if you're just looking at it on the screen, but 3D scans oftentimes take surface color data and plot it over a lower res model than you might think. So it might look good, but you gotta get rid of the surface data and see if we got the pure geometry. And with this model, we didn't. Now, to be fair, this is only the first pass. And with a scanner like this, you can tell it, hey, try it again and give it a different angle to look at the part. And then when you're done, move it to a different spot and try it again and try it again and keep on trying different angles, getting more and more detail. There is a point of diminishing returns here. Once the scanner has seen every part from every angle, there really is no benefit to still going. You also might run into problems with models if you can't find ways to have it settle in a secure manner that won't roll around. So if you've got a nice round base like this, sometimes it pays to use the secret weapon blue tack, just a tiny little bit on there, hidden away somewhere where the scanner hopefully won't pick it up to hold the model down in an angle that it otherwise wouldn't be secure in. And sometimes that'll allow you to get a little bit more detail. But even after scanning this model completely and getting it from every angle, there were still a lot of places that it just didn't catch the detail. In particular, the small recesses, the creases, those areas didn't work at all. And in fact, I have seen that in other scans as well. When I uh, used my Connect scanner to scan my face, it didn't get any of the fine detailed creases of my face. Now, of course, this Connect scanner is really only good for scanning people-sized objects and bringing them down into a smaller print. But even looking at this, it looks like the face is covered in mud. It's generally shaped like the person that we're talking about, but it's not exactly there. And it's a combination of a couple of problems as I see it. First of all, this scanner, the Connect scanner, requires the subject hold perfectly still, and people don't hold perfectly still for a long amount of time. And also it's a question of resolution. If the scanner can only see to the left and to the right of a crease, it's not going to be able to see down into that crease and it's going to just smooth it over. And that's kind of the problem that we get with the soul scanner. As the laser passes over, that laser does have a width and it's not going to see down into there. It's going to see the left edge and the right edge of that laser line and average what's between it. So naturally, small details are going to be lost on this. So maybe in the end, the soul scanner isn't the best one for catching very, very small details with high accuracy. 
That doesn't mean that the soul scanner isn't useful. It's very useful if your object isn't so tiny with such incredibly small details that you need to capture to get a good result. Personally, I found it very useful as a sort of quick measuring tool, and I'll show you some of those in future videos, but I didn't want this to be the end of my exploration as far as scanning minis go, and there's lots of different technologies for 3D scanning, but checking them all out, that's just a lot of work. I wish that there was a friend who I could call who has done a lot of 3D scanning. Oh, it's Andrew. Andrew answered my call. Thank you very much for getting back to me. Hey, Joe. Great to hear from you. How can I help? Well, I'm reaching out to you because you've done a little bit more 3D scanning than I have in the past, right? I sure have, Joe. I've used it in all kinds of projects. Everything from 3D printing a color figurine of myself that was taken from a photo booth, all the way to making a 3D print of my brain that was taken from an MRI scan. Not to mention that really awesome project that you did where you took a 3D print of your own head and then scanned it with, I think, a MakerBot scanner, and then 3D printed that and scanned it and 3D printed that and scanned it. We just saw it get worse and worse and worse as it goes. You know, actually, that's kind of related to my question here. Why do 3D scanners just, in general, not work the way we expect them to? 3D scanning is a really cool technology, but it's lagged a little bit behind 3D printing in terms of overall adoption. And that's because 3D scanning, just like 3D printing, can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, and it can be a little bit complicated to get started. So that's why I created Scantober. I want to spend the month of October talking about different types of 3D scanners, 3D scanning technology, and how you can integrate that technology into your projects. I'm really excited about Scantober. I've got a lot of app demos and product tutorials lined up, but what I'm really excited to see is how people are going to use this 3D scanning as part of their workflow. Okay, so back to your project. Tell me what you're working on. Well, what I'm trying to do actually is I'm trying to 3D scan a mini, uh, a gaming figure. So if you're going to be scanning something small, like a gaming mini that's maybe an inch and a half with a lot of detail, there's a couple of different routes you can take. But before you investigate any of those, what I would encourage you to do is think about what does success mean to you? What would be a successful outcome for this project? Are you trying to take something, like the skull, and then make a copy of it to bring into augmented reality? Do you just need the 3D model, like this? Or do you want to take this model and 3D print a replica of it? like this. These are both different options and there's different ways you can get there. Yeah, the goal on this project is definitely to capture as much detail so that when I 3D print it, it looks as close to the original as possible. So if you're scanning something small with a lot of detail, like this Green Army Man, there's a few professional scanners you can use that will make a near-perfect replica of it, like the Artec Micro. Down to 10 microns in accuracy, this will provide you with a very, very, very accurate mesh to the original model. Yeah, I've heard of the Artec scanner, and while they are remarkable, are there any options that are, I don't know, maybe under $1,000? There's no real right answer, but I'll give you an example of one of the apps that I'm using right now. There's an app called Clone that's a photogrammetry app that stitches photos together to create a solid model using a calibration mat to position the object in space. Clone is also really great at making augmented reality models. So you can see here, I've got the original model, and then this is an AR simulation of that same model. Clone will also let you take a scan of a model, like this skull, and make a 3D printed replica. Yeah, that army man. I actually did try clone and that looks about very similar to what I was able to get from it. So clearly we both have a little bit more exploration to do. Thank you for getting back to me about this. Absolutely, Joe. I hope I helped out and feel free to shoot me a message if you need anything else. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys, if you're not subscribed to Andrew's channel, go over and do that. And I don't say this very often, but you should definitely on his channel ring the bell so you get an email and trust me it'll be a while with his upload schedule it's probably going to be a year before you get that email hey now i have had other 3d scanners that i can use and at the makerspace we have an ein scanner which is almost twice as expensive as the soul scanner and admittedly 
does do a better job of capturing the small details, but even with it, the amount of detail that you capture is, like I say, it just covers it in mud. The Ein scan just covers it in slightly less mud, but it still doesn't catch those fine details. However, I did discover something. A patron brought in a chess set that was carved in stone in Thailand. Absolutely beautiful. The details on it are magnificent. But yes, even these ones, the creases and details got lost in the scan. However, just for fun, I took this one and printed it at 50% scale. It's a, it's a trick that I've seen people use in drawing. Draw big and then shrink it down, and it hides a lot of the faults and details. Well, I wondered if the same couldn't be done here. And sure enough, scaling it down 50% didn't create details that weren't there, but hid the details that weren't. Which makes me think, I wonder if I could sculpt something with clay. Something that's not too big, something that would still fit on the soul scanner, but scan it and shrink it down to a size of a mini. Now again, this isn't the original problem. The original problem is, can you 3D scan a mini? And the answer, I guess, is yes, you can, but temper your expectations. But if you wanted to make minis, I think a scanner might still work. Sculpt it big, scan it, and then print it small. It's something that I'm going to have to play with in the near future, but there we go. Danny, I hope that that answers your question and everybody else out there who was wondered if you couldn't 3D scan a mini. I'm still going to explore this option and see if I can find one that works, but for now, that's as far as this technology will go, and I hope that this has helped some of you. Before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Making channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there. And hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there. All right, so we're going to stop that. Don't need to be burning to 4K.